Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, thanks for all your comments on the last video and uh, your support has been awesome. Really, really good. So I'm continuing with the gates. I need to make two five foot gates, 1.5 meters uh, for the goat paddock because goat delivery could be imminent.
So there we go. Uh, two gates done. That's three gates done in total. All this mess here left over. So a bit uh, just under half of what I originally started with. So basically the three gates. I'll show you the gate. Okay, so that's it. Uh, these two and the small one for around about 30 euros. So it just goes to show you don't need to throw money at stuff to get a solution. You can just do it, just uh, find a way. Uh, so what I have to do now, go and tidy up my mess. These are only roughly tied there. The gap in the middle will close up. I'm going to put a little bit of gap at the end for the hinges, both sides. We'll probably have maybe an inch and a half gap down there. 35, 40 mil. Okay everyone, so now I've made the gates, um, hinges are notoriously expensive here as you know, so I thought I'd make my own cheap version of hinges, and uh, here's what we're going to do. So basically, um, out of the angle iron that I've used for the gate posts on the fencing, as, you, as you've seen before, I've cut six of these longer ones, and six of the smaller ones. All I'm going to do is take a smaller one, drill a hole, through the two and put a bolt in and then drill two holes in this piece, three holes in this piece, so this piece can screw to the gate, this piece screws to the post and the bolt makes the hinge. Really simple. So here it goes. Um, basically I'm using a 6mm uh, high speed steel drill bit with a 3 jaw chuck in my corded uh, LT trusty LTTE5 um, only because it's uh, there's a lot of drilling to do basically so um, instead of just going through batteries um, we'll do that so I've got my safety glasses which are here <laughs> uh, basically then so this is how it works come closer I'm going to drill a hole here and here. Uh, this is this is on its flat here. So this is this piece of screw to the gate post. Then I'm going to drill a hole through here as a hinge point, and then three holes. Let's say one, two, three holes here. That will screw into the wooden gates. And basically, this hinge point. Yeah, so there'll be a bolt through the middle of here, and it'll hinge on that point, but it'll be sitting on these, which is screwed to the gatepost. Simple stuff. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. We do this every day. I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight Through the night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just us two
sisters to me and you. So, folks, there you have it. Um, six hinges. Two for the left hand of the double gates, two for the right hand of the double gates, and two for the little single side gate. All I've got to do now is go and fit them. So, it stopped raining, uh, so we're going to fit the gates, fit the hinges to the gates, and then, or to the post, and then the gates. We're using these uh, like tech screws, self drilling. They are uh, 40 mil, inch and a half long, with a pH3 end on it just in case you wanted to know but uh, so it's basically just going to screw the hinge to the gate and to the post I'll prop the gate up on wedges of wood to get it at the right level and we know that it's level because this post is level and there's an even gap so simple as that let's try and do this without any camps so we need right there is I should have brought some clamps with me, <coughs> but foolishly forgot. Check this parallel and then put the bottom one. Bit more tricky because we got to um, almost to cut the wire. You know what I mean? We've got wire on this one. I had to make a few adjustments here with a chainsaw uh, because this is much thicker than this one. So, done that off camera. <laughs> So 
So there it goes. Um, obviously these screws need to be a bit beefier, so I'll get some bigger 8mm, maybe 10mm bolts for there. Redrill the holes, that's easy, but uh, roughly screwed on. And uh, opens up. Simple. So we'll do that on, on the three of them, and then um, I'll have to somehow make a catch that goes in between. So there we go, two working gates. So, just show you the, uh, the little gate I've done, or just finished. There she is. And uh, I'll just untie it a minute. The rope's obviously temporary. So there again, yeah, this one, same principle. But I forgot that this is two uh, two inch tubes so I had to alter the fixing slightly cut it down and fix it vertically like that uh, same principle just pivoting on a, on a bolt and um, as you can see works perfectly so just gonna make some catches now real simple stuff I may do the same thing just screw a catch like this down here onto this one and then screw a piece of angle iron along there which which slides into here and you put a bolt or something in to catch it in the middle of the gate, it'll be nice and secure. There we go. So hi guys, a bit of excitement for us, we've just had a package from our great subscribers Sandra and Raymond uh, from the Netherlands and we're just going to do a bit of an unboxing. Okay, go for it. Oh. Oh. These look really nice. Oh, what are they? Are they like marshmallows? Yeah. Oh, the like waffle like things oh, on the Oh, I love these. waffles. Oh, yes. Lovely. Oh, look at that. It's bounds. Oh, thanks, guys. Oh, this is the creme de resistance. Oh, what's this? Look this? at this. Oh, it's, oh, clove. Um, what would you call it? Not terrific, like dried sausages. Yeah. yeah cured. This is what Raymond does uh, for a living, and oh, we've okay. had these before Pepper. at Cindy's place, and look they are that. wonderful. Thanks, guys. Oh. Um, wow. Thanks guys, that's brilliant. That'll keep me in street waffle for uh, <laughs> the morning. And um, <laughs> no, just just absolutely brilliant. Thank, oh, thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Yeah. Hi everyone, well, it's all happening here this morning. Um, I've got the compressor going. Behind me to pump up. The wheel on the tractor, this is the tip. Uh, from one of our subscribers. Sorry, I've I've tried to look through the um, 
comments, but I mean, we get 300 a week, so it's a bit difficult. But someone suggested, thank you ever so much, put a strap around the middle of the tyre, and it'll pull it out onto the rim, and then I can blow it up. Excellent idea. I've cleaned the paint off, so it should, should be okay. And another thing has happened. We've had our delivery from Fundal, our lovely people at Fundal Gesso. Uh, so we've had plasterboard for the games room, which um, I have no doubt once I pump the tyre up, I'm going to have to get this indoors because the, fu uh, the sun, etc. It needs to be indoors anyway. I don't think we have any more rain now until next time. Until next time, until we get a storm, really. It's um, yeah, we've had a bit of rain yesterday, which is great, but hardly, you know, it's dried up completely now, so you'd, you'd never know. But brilliant stuff so lots of indoor lots of indoor jobs for um, sunny hot days let's see not yet Try and get it done up a bit more. It's just not sealing at all. Maybe I'll put some uh, Vaseline. Yeah, or grease around it. Try that. Ow, finger. Fuss. That's because Meg, like I said, Meg is uh, in the preferred oh, roost uh, at the moment. I see. When I went in to take her out, because she's decided to go broody, but we've already got Blondie broody, and yeah. uh, we can't have the two together. So I'm trying to break her broodiness by going uh. in and removing her. And I just went in there, and there was. Uh, Bluebell was sat on top of her. Bluebell? I have no idea who Bluebell is. Favourite chicken. Oh, I see. Okay, guys, it's a bit windy. Hang on. How's that? Come a bit closer to get the wind. So, a uh, quick tip on carrying plasterboard, yeah? Uh, they're usually only 20 odd kilos a piece, not that heavy, but they're just awkward, and especially in the wind, it's really windy today. Um, uh, yeah. So, basically, find the, this is going to be great, <laughs> find the middle of the sheet, yeah? And um, if I can show you, put your hand, turn your hand this way, turn it around so it's underneath, in the middle, and your top hand on the top, oh. and you've got the middle of the sheet in the wind. And then you quickly run with it.
Ooh. The table is coming in handy. <laughs> Two. How many to go? I can't add that up. Uh, Fifteen more to go. So there we go. All in here. Wind just stay for a long time, but uh, there you go. Just makes it a little bit harder work. Uh, so that's nine plasterboard, eight plasterboard, and eight insulated plasterboards. I'll show you what they look like. So the insulated panels have a 12 mil thick of thick piece of plasterboard, gypsum, cardboard top gypsum, standard plasterboard worldwide. Then I've got a 20 mil piece of polystyrene, uh, open closed cell polystyrene, yeah, uh, for insulation. Closed cell as opposed to the open cell stuff uh, makes it a bit denser, a bit better insulative properties. Not the best, but all it's doing is going on this wall and this wall. Uh, it's just to stop the heat because these blocks, although they are hollow, they do transmit a bit of heat through them. So uh, if we put this on, should um, well obviously it'll make it look better as well. But before I do that, I have to plasterboard the ceiling, and uh, we sort. Uh, I've got cables for the electrics all all wired in. They're just all coiled up upstairs. <coughs> and um, well, we're at the stage then we can finish off these stairs, and uh, yeah, all looking good. So, what I'm going to do now is have a cup of tea. And as I'm going to have a cup of tea, I reckon Ange might be doing something in the kitchen. I hope so, this video is going to be rubbish. <laughs> Hi babe, what's you up to? Oh, I don't know. Oh dear. <laughs> what's up to? Somebody suggested, oh, why don't you try pastel donatas? Thanks, guys. No idea what I'm doing. So, Andrew found a recipe, never done these before. I'll just explain what's going on. So, to cheat a little bit, we bought some, uh, a roll of the ready made pastry, as you know, in, in the, it comes in the packets. And that was only enough to do two, four, six, eight of these. So I quickly made up some stuff with our own eggs, as you can see. <laughs> uh, it wasn't puff pastry, it's just my pastry with a secret ingredient. So I'm experimenting a bit as well. That's my olive oil pastry with a secret ingredient. Now I'm just chucking together all the rest of this stuff. What we'll do is... <laughs> oh dear. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll um, get shouted at by... Yeah, we'll not make... We'll not put the recipe up. We'll just see how this goes. Uh, well, if it goes alright, we'll put the recipe up. No, we won't. Oh. We'll just uh, see how this goes, and um, there's lots of uh, kitchen alchemy going on here. And egg yolks and egg whites and lemons and stuff like well, that. The egg whites don't get used there. Oh, really? Oh, okay. They're for... Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll let her do the experimental bake, and then next week, if it's all successful, we'll do... A proper oh, recipe. Oh really? So you can eat more pasta than apple? Oh, what a shame. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> so, while Angie's uh, uh, stirring up all that... Um, hang on, do it this way, right? So, while Angie's stirring up her uh, kitchen alchemy thing here, I, um, this afternoon, a lovely South African lady come to see me, um, Cindy Vine. Welcome home, Cindy. Glad you got back. And that South African young lady bought me a lovely... South African wine. So um, while Angie's slaving over a hot stove, I'll just watch her and film a little bit, <laughs> drink some wine, you know how it is. Right, we've got the oh my God. loopy stuff there. Really good. Okay, we're at a critical stage apparently. <laughs> uh, uh, Rosa uh, uh, Lorenzo, um, good friend of ours, you've you make the, probably the best pastel de nata I've ever tasted. Oh, no, don't so, put me under And trying to keep up with you now. And uh, just tell us if she's doing the right thing. Oh, don't. <laughs> okay, here goes. Uh, what have you got there? <laughs> oh, I don't I just... Huh? Oh, it's a disaster. <laughs> no, it'll probably be fine. Well, we shall see. Probably. Oh. 15 minutes.
find this reach a couple of lemons that are falling down the ravine, which I think I might do, so I might have to go down the other way. I expected it to be quite this bad down here. Maybe I should have risked falling through the ravine. God. We do have a lemon tree here. Oh, there it is! has been cut this year. It's just stuff really gross. Like mad. I nearly just came down in my sandals. I would have had my feet chopped to pieces. Maybe going to the supermarket to get a lemon would have been easier. <laughs> well, there's our little lemon tree. I might just go for a couple that I can see here. Well, little guy, we're going to have to definitely come in here and sort you out a bit better, aren't we? Smell is fabulous from the one in here, so it's a bit weird camera only because I thought there we go, that's the little four guys. Look at my chopper and fight my way back through the wilderness. Okay guys, <laughs> this is going to be an unedited, let's just, oh, let's just do it, know. let's see how it goes. I don't know, they, they, not quite, I don't know, they've gone a bit weird, a bit sort of puffed up. A bit puffed up, they might unfluff. Yeah. Yeah, the ones that I saw, the marvellous Rosa, do, were more like this, but full. Yeah? You need, we need to get them here and... Uh, she can I, teach you, I get, need, get a bit of practice. I need training. Training. Yeah. Well done, babe. First pasta de nata. Well, we don't know. We don't know what they taste like yet. So yeah, I know. Uh, they look all right-ish. Um, let's see what they taste like. <laughs> so, oh, sparky, sparky. <laughs> so that's it for um, us this uh, Tuesday. Tuesday, guys. Yes. Um, we'll say goodbye now pasta because nata. we I'm haven't eaten eat all of these. I'm eating all of these. All yeah, of but them. we might die, so... <laughs> as if I need to. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for your likes. Thanks for your subscribe. Thanks for ringing that little notification bell. And just, uh, thanks for just you're awesome. Yep. And uh, we'll see you on Friday.
Bye. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. Um, the experimental pastiche dinata, pastel dinata, singularly. Uh, this this is um, the three ones with the puff pastry, which is just the packet pastry. This one is one with the pastry that I made. Yeah. Um, we'll see what they're like, and then uh, if they're any, if they, if they tasted any good, we'll get back to you, um, and and it will be our recipe next week. And maybe they'll look a bit better than this. But uh, get on, hands. Well done. Um, awesome. Let's, let's munch them down. So anyway, the first few bites, the verdict is they taste great, but they're not pastiche donata, no. pastel donata. Why? Because I made them. No. <laughs> no Why are I, they not? No, they're a bit... It's a bit too eggy almost. Okay. So a bit more like custard tarts as opposed to pastel de nata. Yeah, and I think they're they're not as um, custardy in the middle as they should be. They're a bit overcooked. But, you know, we could do it. Hey, it's all an experimentation. They're still edible. Mm. So. It's nearly there, but it's not. It's nearly there. Mm. The, this is the, the pastry that I made. A quick whisk up of the um, olive oil pastry that I make. Definite no no. Uh, uh, uh. Um, excuse me. The <laughs> so, so, uh, the one with the um, the short bought pastry. Puff pastry. Puff pastry. It's okay. Still, the filling needs a bit of something. Adjustment. But <laughs> adjustment. It's still not right. Um, these are these are basically what are they call these failures. Uh, these are experimentations. Experiment. Mm. Experiments. Loving it. Um, we will be back.